Welcome my constant reader friends. I'm Tad and this is Tad Reads Books and Stuff. So if you've been following along, uh, you know that I'm in the process of doing a read-along with Graz on the GKBC for Saga. Now we're on book two and in this episode we're going to be talking about chapters 25 through 30 in this book. Now, I will say, I know there's a lot of videos out there concerning this book, but it's just something fun that Graz and I are doing. We're having a great time. I'm really enjoying reading this, and it's just uh, an aside, a, a special video that I do, well, we do, every about two weeks. Uh, discussing the last six chapters of the book that we've read. So we're on 25 through 30 in this. Now, th th this is just fun. Let's just have some fun here. I took some notes. They already fell on the ground. And I'm just going to read you from my notes that I took on this. Now, again, if you've been watching this little series on this, this uh, graphic novel... You've noticed that I've, I've mentioned that it's basically a, a Romeo and Juliet story. Of course, two warring factions, two different families, two different worlds, and young lovers coming together. Uh, fortunately, they don't commit suicide together, but they do something maybe even worse. They have a child. They have a little girl that now is a mixed race. And everyone in the universe is going batshit crazy over this little girl. Her name is Hazel. So, we are on book two, chapters 25 through 30. And just to catch up a little bit, when we last left our uh, exp ever-expanding and ever-declining uh, cast of characters... You may remember we were talking about Dango. Now, Dango is a TV head. He's, uh, but he is, a, he was a janitor. He didn't like the way he'd been treated. His son was murdered, killed. He blames the state, all kinds, things like that. So anyways, he had gone and kidnapped uh, Prince Robot IV's son, who had just been born. And pretty much killed everybody in the, the castle, or the palace area, and kidnapped the baby and escaped. So he goes away, and he has this bright idea that he's going to go on TV and give his plight to the world. And they're all going to join arms up against their oppressors and blah, blah, blah. So he goes to the planet that Marco and Alana... And the baby Hazel and Mother Clara and Isabel are everybody's on this planet where Alana's working as an actress. And he goes, he pretty much kills uh, the whole all the acting troupe. Uh, Alana had already left for the day. Then he finds Alana. Um, well, he finds their ship. You remember they're in a spaceship that looks like a tree. Yep. So he goes there. And he basically now kidnaps Hazel as well and everyone that was in the tree. Unfortunately, Hazel, or not Hazel, I'm sorry, Alana and Marco had had a big fight. Marco was away when Dango kidnaps him and takes off in the tree. Now Marco is separated from his baby and his family. But just then, Prince Robot 4 shows up. And now Marco and Prince Robot 4 have joined forces along with Yuma, who was one of the troop of actors that got killed but didn't get killed. And they find um, Goose, who is a shepherd, because I'm not making any of this stuff up. This, this is actually the story. The shepherd can communicate mentally with his sheep, which aren't sheep, they're actually huge walruses, who is now one of the walruses, is a pet for Hazel. And on the tree ship, 
And so now they're going to use goose to make mental contact with this walrus so that they can find their kids. Oh my gosh. But the whole time they're fighting. So, so that's where we left off. Um, all right. So let me just read what's going on. So of course, Marco joins up with Robot Prince 4, Yuma and Goose, and they're now trying to track down the tree ship and their kids. So, and you know this book just jumps around. I've told you it's, it's beautiful chaos as well, right? Romeo and Juliet, beautiful chaos, great artwork, great storytelling, tons of characters coming in, going, being killed constantly. Somebody's going to get killed. Somebody, somebody new is going to show up. It, it's amazing. So, all right. So there, are, so <laughs> now when we start this chapter 25, um, Alana and Hazel and Kara and Isabel are kidnapped, but they're on a planet now that is really cold and doesn't have night so it's daytime all the time that's a problem because Isabel the ghost that has inhabited the body of Hazel and acts as like her babysitter only comes out at night and this world they're on doesn't have night so Isabel's kind of trapped Isabel hasn't been she Isabel's kind of AWOL so she's not helping out sorry Gross I know you love Isabel but she's not in these these chapters um then we jump, so, so that's what's happening with them. <laughs> then we jump to um, Gwendolyn. Remember Gwendolyn? Glenn, Gwendolyn is Marco's ex-fiance. She's now hooked up with Sophie. I'm calling her Sophie 1 and Sophie 2. Sophie is the Will's sister, Sophie 1. And then Sophie 2 was the child that the Will rescued from Sextillion. It was, I guess, going to be groomed as a sex slave. And they are in a search for dragon sperm because dragon sperm will help heal the will who is on another planet in a coma because Sophie too stabbed him in the neck and almost killed him. So they're looking for dragon sperm to save him. So they're on another planet. Wow. Then we go back now. A, a ship from the robot planet, the TV heads, finds uh, Prince Robot 4 and their ship that they're on, and they get into a fight and battle. Um, but they jump away. In the process, Yuma got some drugs, some more drugs off a dead person. The drugs are tainted. We don't know this. Marco and Yuma start talking about Alana and you got her hooked on drugs and why. And she's like, no, she wanted them. And he doesn't understand why. So he decides to take some of these drugs that Yuma has. And the drugs are tainted, and both of them do these drugs and basically go into comas and are on the verge of dying. All right, so then we jump <clears throat> from that back to uh, Dango. And now, Alana and Marco's mother, Kara are locked in like a cell and they're fighting all the time but because it's mother and you know daughter in law they decide though that they really need to do something can they attack dango and get out of here or save themselves so they, they think they're gonna do that dango comes in foils that Tells them that he has now made contact because the his effort to be on TV didn't work. Nobody gave a shit. He decides to hook up with this 
a group of mercenaries or revolutionaries, they call themselves, called the Fourth Cell. He's asked them to come now and join them. Alana knows that this is a bad idea because she knows the history of the Fourth Cell. And they say they're revolutionaries, but they're just in for profit as well. And they're going to just probably sell him out, take the kids, and kill everybody anyways. He doesn't believe it. Of course, that comes to pass. We go back to Marco. Now, Marco, while he was dying, he was passed out almost in a coma himself. He was having strange dreams that brought back a lot of memories to him. And he does come out of it. Uh, he and Yuma come out of this. They don't die. But now Marco has something switched in him. He was a pacifist. Now he's decided he's not going to be a pacifist any longer. He's not going to take any more BS and he's going to start killing people. So <laughs> that whole dynamics changed. We go back to the planet where they're trying. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> oh my goodness. We go back to the planet with Gwendolyn and Sophie and Sophia, Sophie and Sophie. And um, they run into Alvar, Alvar, H-A-L-B-O-R, Halvor. And Halvor is the Stalks' brother. They get into a little altercation with him, but he brings them an earlobe. If you think I'm going crazy, that's how this book is this is how this story is so however shows up then blah 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 he goes they get they finally find he helps them find the male the only remaining male dragon so they can get his sperm let me tell you something if you're reading this you don't know from page to page what the hell is gonna happen craziness happens scenes that you cannot believe are gonna happen happen even though I'm telling this story, I'm leaving out so much that you just sit there. Sometimes I sit there in awe. I'm like, oh my God, they just did that. What the hell did they do? Constantly. But it's still beautiful. It's still totally fun and totally exciting. So you're going to turn a page and you're going to see something that you never thought you would see with your own eyes in a comic book. I'm just saying, you are going to read things, things are going to happen that you never thought would ever happen in a comic book. They're going to happen in this book, and it's not just non sequitur, it's not just thrown in there to be crazy, to be incendiary, to gross you out, I mean, even though it does all those things, it still fits together into this amazing, cool, strange, crazy story. And I'm still loving it. 30 chapters or episodes or comic books into this. I'm still loving it. I don't even know what the hell's going on now because Dangle realizes that Cell 4 are going to just use him. So they get in a fight. And they kill the leader of the Cell 4. Then they get into a fight with the rest of the Cell 4. They kind of break loose. Dango goes running after them. And guess who shows up on that planet now? Yep. Marco and Prince Robot 4. Prince Robot 4 kills Dango. And I don't even know what's going on. Hazel now, I just, I saw a picture of the next chapter. Hazel's going to school? Or, I, what? It's craziness. And it's glorious. It's awesome. I'm loving it. I hope you can tell from my excitement. I know that Graz is, is loving it too. Um, we're just having fun reading through this and talking about it on our channels. I hope you enjoy it. It's, it's just super fun. If you haven't read it 
or you're on the shelf about reading it, or you just think it's it's overhyped because everyone talks about how great it is, do yourself a favor and just read it. It's just fun. You get home from work and uh, you've had a bad day or a tough day at work, and you can just have this sitting on your end table by your couch or your chair, or your recliner or whatever, and you just pull it out and you can just read. It's not, you know, it's not a hard read, but the the graph. I can't even show you the graphics because you never know what you're going to flip to. It, it might be not safe for work, not safe for anything, but it still has meaning and it still perpetuates the story forward. It's great. I'm loving it. Can't read to, wait to read the next six chapters. I'm sorry I'm a little late with this video, but things happen and here it is now. So I can't wait to see what Graz says about it. And please check out his channel as well. I will link it, of course, in the description. And I don't know. Let's see what happens next. I'm just having fun with it. I hope you're having fun too. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you found any entertaining value in this video, please like, subscribe, leave me tons of comments. And as always, peace out.